Hey, it's Chris. With Apple transitioning away from Intel chips to their own Apple Silicon, what does that mean for people who need to buy a Mac right now? Should you wait? Should you pull the trigger? That's what this video is gonna help you figure out. All right, but why did Apple make this transition happen in the first place? What initiated it? Because that's helpful to understand as you're in this buying process. Well, basically, word on the street was that Apple was unhappy with the puny gains in performance that Intel was providing year to year. Either that, or maybe it had more to do with Intel's buggy Skylake chips. So what's the big deal here? Well, ask yourself this question. Year to year, as you're thinking about buying a new Mac, would you prefer to have modest, decent performance gains, or do you want bigger, more massive performance and power gains? Exactly, that's why Apple's making this switch. So should you buy one of the last Intel-based Macs? Is it even safe to buy one of the last Intel-based Macs at this point? And for that matter, is it safe or is it a good time to buy an Apple Silicon-based Mac once those start hitting? Those are the questions that we're really looking at today. But one thing's for sure though, either way, you're gonna end up with the new Big Sur redesign, whichever route that you take. And of course, if you've been visiting applehype.com every day, then you're already up to date with the latest on this whole situation. So let's talk about the timeline for this transition because I really think that's the first thing you have to wrap your head around when you're starting to think about making a purchase right now. Basically, at the end of the day, it's gonna end up taking two years for this transition to complete from Intel and moving into ARM or Apple Silicon. Now we've been told that there's actually some Intel-based Macs that are still in the pipeline that haven't yet been released, which makes this whole thing still even more interesting or maybe harder in terms of sorting out which one you're gonna get. So the real question is, are there any good reasons to buy an Intel-based Mac over waiting for Apple Silicon? Well, one thing that I know is floating through a lot of people's heads right now is that maybe they wanna get that first batch of Apple Silicon shipped and out of the way, let Apple work out the kinks, and then jump in on that second generation. And honestly, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard because sometimes when the first batch of something new comes along, there are problems and they can be unanticipated and maybe Apple does need to work out some kinks. Nobody knows at this point. Now, I don't know if any subscribers remember, but a few months ago, I made a video on whether or not you can game on this 16 inch MacBook Pro because it has some pretty impressive. Well, in that video, I was gaming on some AAA titles using Boot Camp. So I loaded up Boot Camp in order to load up Windows without any virtualization in order to game. Well, Boot Camp is going away when we make the switch to Apple Silicon. But I've already heard that people are talking about there's gonna be some kind of a virtualized way of accessing Windows. I don't know if Parallels is gonna still work or any solution like that. That's yet to be determined. So I guess that's kind of an unknown at this point. And honestly, the last reason may be that you just find it cool to own one of the last Intel-based Max before they're a thing of the past because they're going the way of haptic touch. I don't know, that's about all the reasons that I can come up with. But in any case, at least it's good to know that Apple and Intel have said that they're gonna continue to support the Intel-based Macs. On the other hand, the first Mac that's supposed to ship with Apple Silicon inside is supposed to be coming later this year. So it's not that far away. The only problem with that is that we don't know what the product roadmap looks like. So we don't know if your favorite model, the one that you're thinking about buying, is gonna be one of the first ones to get an update. So if you're really looking forward to a MacBook Pro that has Apple Silicon inside instead of an Intel chip, I don't know when that's gonna land and neither do you. That said, you need a machine when you need a machine. If it's a must have, then you really have no choice. You gotta get one when you need one. If it's just a nice to have, then maybe you've got some padding in your timeline and you can kind of wait and see how things play out. And if you do need a Mac right now, I'll leave a link down below in the description where you can check out the latest prices. But for now, let's move on and start talking about something that I think a lot of people are wondering about. Will your favorite or most needed apps be supported on an Apple Silicon system? Well, one bit of good news right out of the gate is that we know Apple's own apps are definitely gonna be supported and they're gonna be ready to go when Apple Silicon hits. So if you're a professional and you're using Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro, then you can basically rest easy. Also, a huge portion of Mac users will be glad to know that Apple and Adobe have been working together to get Adobe's Creative Cloud, that whole suite of apps working on Apple Silicon as well. Because I know for me personally, I'm a big Photoshop and Lightroom user, and if those two things aren't working, 
but Final Cut's working for my videos, well then that's a big chunk of my workflow that's not working right. But it doesn't sound like any of that's gonna be an issue. And also Microsoft has been working with Apple as well to make sure that Office and all of those apps that so many people rely on are ready to go as well. The other interesting thing though is that Apple has released Rosetta 2, which I don't need to bog down in the details. All you need to know about it is that it's gonna automatically make sure that all of your apps that haven't been updated by a developer for Apple Silicon will work right out of the gate. So that's without any kind of modification or anything that you need to do. It should all just work. Now the keyword there is should, but at the end of the day, it doesn't sound like on the app front there's too much to be overly concerned with. One really interesting thing though for Apple Silicon machines is that they're gonna automatically be able to run the entire catalog of both iOS and iPadOS apps. And as Jason Snell pointed out, that makes the Mac the only machine that's going to be able to do everything because your iPhone and your iPad can't run Mac apps. All right, so apps aside, what about power and speed and performance? Because maybe you just know you're gonna be in the Apple ecosystem past the next two years. It doesn't really matter. You're planning on being around for either of these chips. So what about the performance? Well, obviously, whenever you purchase a new Mac, whether it's an Intel-based Mac or gonna be one of the new Apple Silicon-based Macs, it's going to be faster. That's just the way that it works. The question really is how much faster. So if you buy an Intel-based Mac in the coming months, it is gonna be somewhat faster. But if you wait and buy an Apple Silicon-based Mac, chances are that it's gonna be massively faster or, and more powerful. And a massive leap in performance, that might actually be worth waiting for, if you can. Put differently, it's very, very doubtful that any of the new Intel machines will be able to outperform, maybe even get anywhere close to the new Apple Silicon machines. Very doubtful. The next thing that you have to consider is what about updates? So if you're gonna buy a new Intel-based Mac right now and you plan on using it over the next half a decade or even longer, how do you know that future versions of Mac OS are going to continue to support that purchase? You don't really. And another thing is, if you do buy an Intel-based Mac and in five or six or seven years, you want to try to get something for it, whether that's a trade-in value or you wanna to try to sell it, is it even gonna be worth as much or anything to a potential buyer? Because that's one of the great things about Apple products in general is that they have great resale value but the switch from Intel to ARM might actually hurt that resale or trade-in value of an Intel-based Mac at the moment. That's just a guess. You know, something else to consider and to think about is that this same basic industrial design that we've had on MacBooks for several years now, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth and it could be about due for a design refresh. And what better time for Apple to debut a brand new design than on a Apple Silicon powered Mac? Now, iPads have Apple Silicon inside already. They run on the A-series. The new Macs are going to also feature Apple Silicon. And there have been people on Twitter contacting me saying, you know what, I'm getting kind of uncomfortable because the Mac, which really used to be its own thing, is starting to look more and more iPad-like. And I don't know, I mean, could it be that in the coming years, Apple is going to produce some Macs that are compatible with an Apple Pencil? or that have touch screens? I don't know, but the Intel machines are not likely to get any of those updates. And maybe that's a pro or a con for you. Although to be honest, I think a lot of people would just be happy if Apple would update the webcam to have better quality. That's one place where just it's not making sense, especially these days, to skimp in terms of saving price. Especially on like a MacBook Pro. That's a pro device anyways. The webcam is still a potato. And anyways, if you're considering getting a new Mac right now, then have you considered getting an iPad Pro? At least I should throw that out there as part of this conversation. All right, so let me wrap this video up by just telling you where I'm at personally on this whole thing because I think it may help spark some ideas for your purchase decision as well. I recently bought this 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I've had for less than a year. And just the other day, Apple released a new Intel based Mac that's already got 75% faster graphics performance. So whenever you buy it, it's just gonna be out of date and that's unfortunate. But still, this has been a real beast of a workhorse for me as a video editor. And as subscribers know, when I first purchased this, it did have some kernel panic issues, which I got sorted out by getting a replacement. 
So if you've been wondering whatever happened with that and you missed the follow-ups, that's what happened. But it's been a great machine ever since then. Now I have my last book pro for somewhere in the range of a few years. I don't remember exactly the dates and I'll probably have this one for you know three or four years as well as my main machine. So that puts me well past the two year transition mark and it gets me past all the kinks that Apple may be working out as well with the first gen of Apple Silicon. And so it kind of puts me in a sweet spot, I feel like. And if that's how it's worked out for me, having purchased this within the last nine months or so, then maybe that's how it might work out for you in the next couple of months as well. And in that way, I guess I kind of feel pretty good about my purchase and my next purchase right now because I'll definitely be ready for that massive jump in performance over just a pretty good or decent jump that I would normally get with an Intel based machine. All right, well that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Again, there's some links down below if you wanna do some price checking. And don't forget to check out applehype.com. You can catch me every Friday on the After Party Podcast where we'll hang out and talk about Apple stuff every week there as well. That's free, so you might as well. And also you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, in both of those places. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.